Hi, this is Paul, and today I'm going to show you how to create a 3D candle effect using BCC Particle Emitter and Adobe After Effects. Alright, so here I am in After Effects, and this is the finished rendered video. And again, I'll play that for you one more time with the music. Notice how the candles come alive with the music and then die down with it as well. That's all done in this timeline here. So you can see I've got a few things going on. This is my footage, of course. It has been color corrected. You can see a very moody change I made there. I've added a 3D tracked camera um, so that the particles or the candles there will match the 2D video. I know it seems weird 3D tracking 2D video, but it worked out very well. And then I've got a beat reactor track here, which is reacting to a very specific frequency in the organ. Um, so it's not just the overall volume level that it's reacting to, it's a very specific note that it's reacting to. Very cool stuff. Okay, so what is this all based on? It's all based on this effect I made here, and this is almost all particle emitter. Very realistic candle flame. See it even moves like a candle would. And when you put it on top of some suggestive footage, it is very convincing. Um, anything like a candle or a lighter or even just some kind of like mood candle can work very well. It's a very convincing effect. People don't normally expect a candle to be fake, so they don't pay attention to it, which works in our benefit. All right, so let's get started. Let's do a new comp, set a new solid, and we're going to start with Particle Emitter 3D. It's going to drop to auto here. So here's the default setting, a bunch of white particles flying at us. First thing we're going to do is change where they're flying. So in the emitter group, change the direction to upward. And now they're going straight up. They're still spreading out a little bit, so take that spread parameter, set that to zero. And this would be a very tall candle, should we leave it all the way up there. So let's turn down the particle speed to 50, and turn down the particle lifespan to 0.8. Okay, so that gives us a candle height that's easier to work with. Now we also want to make sure it's there the whole time. So scroll down again, find the pre-run parameter, increase that to like two seconds. So now the candle is always there. And we don't want the edges to be quite this bumpy. So let's increase the particle count, take the birth rate up to about 400. Looks good. And that's all we have to do in the emitter group right now. All right, now let's go into particles and change the white spheres that we were seeing earlier. We're not going to use image collection as the shape, we're going to use round blurs. The reason I'm doing this shape is because you can control the feather blurring, and we're going to take that down to zero to get nice hard edges. Now we can adjust the size and increase the size to about 41. And let's go into size evolution, check that. And this gives you the ability to taper the size of the particle over time. It's really cool. So you want a candle to be thickest in the middle, and then kind of taper off like a arrow or a feather or something like that. All right, so that's pretty good. And you can even animate this graph to get really fancy in case you want to really rotoscope your candle. Um, but no need, that looks very good. Now we can change the color. So we're going to use Gradient Evolve. And opening up the color gradient, there's a lot of presets we could use here, but I'm just going to create my own. So I'm going to overwrite all these colors. Candles are blue near the wick and get wider in the middle. So we're going to copy that progression and then let them go yellow towards the tip. Now we're going to change the blend mode of these particles. So don't get too crazy with these colors because they're going to get washed out. Good. Now let's change the blend mode of the particles to screen. And there goes all our color. Um, Again, it's actually the glow that's going to give you most of the color in your scene, so don't worry too much about these. However, you can get some of that color back by adjusting the opacity. So I'm going to bring the opacity down. Uh, something around 20 should be good, maybe even less. So you can see how the color comes back when I do that. And we're also going to use opacity evolution. Just like the size evolution, we can draw in how we want it to go and we want it to start off fully transparent and end fully transparent and that's 
about it. Okay, so we have our candle and its shape, and it's just kind of there. Um, it's very static, so let's get some motion into this thing. A couple things we can do to see motion is we can increase the random percents on things like size and opacity and even the lifespan. So if you increase the randomness, you will start to see motion appearing everywhere. So now you can actually see the circles moving a little bit in that light. Let's actually increase the opacity to 20. It's better. So you can see like now it looks like it's moving something somewhat alive. Again, if we increase the random percent in the lifespan, we'll get what looks like fragments coming off the tip of the flame, which is another characteristic thing about candles and fires. Um, so that's good too. We can also increase the random percent on the speed, but that will change the height of the candle, so I'm not going to do that. Okay, now let's make the candle wiggle a little bit. So next, go into the fractal field parameters, increase the movement noise to about 300, and we get a very uh, a wiggly candle, um, maybe too much. So let's take the frequency of that noise down to about 16. So that's quite a bit smoother, looks a lot more realistic. And let's also take off the Y and Z. This is a 3D particle emitter, remember, so it was moving in X, Y, and Z. I like it better just moving in X. Okay, we're going to increase the auto-evolve speed so the noise pattern changes faster over time. And for Evolve X, we're going to increase that to 200. Just kind of further randomizes the pattern. And the noise character itself, smooth is the default here. And all of these other options work really well, except square. Don't use square for candles. Um, but I like pattern 1 or pattern 2 the best. They are just a bit less predictable than the others. All right, now one thing you can also change is the fade in noise. Um, if too much of your candle is affected, increasing this parameter will make it take longer for the noise to affect the object. So we can go even higher. It's in seconds, so just keep that in mind. If you set it to zero, the whole candle moves at once. Uh, it looks cool, but it doesn't look like a candle. So let's put that up to one. And that works pretty well. Let's go a little higher, actually. Okay, good. All right, now there are other things we're gonna change in the candle as we get further along. Um, there's some parameters and global settings that we'll need to change later, but I'm gonna save those for later. Now let's make it look more realistic. So we're gonna collapse particle emitter right now, and we're gonna add a blur. Now there's a couple ways you could blur this candle. I like to use vector blur. You could also use a matte choker to get similar results, but the vector blur really takes the direction of the flame and works with it very well. So setting the type to perpendicular and increasing the amount gives a really cool look to it. If you scrub, you can see it really smoothed out the edges without making it look too fuzzy. It looks a lot more like a candle now. And again, if you didn't use vector blur, you could just use some kind of matte choker to take care of these edges. And you could also use the motion blur here, which we'll use anyway later, but that'll slow things down, so we'll save that for last. Okay, so we have our vector blur. Now we want to glow. I'm going to use the fast film glow, because it's fast and it does what we need. Let's bring the radius down here and maybe increase the threshold so we get like a nice inner glow coming from the candle and then apply another one and this is going to be where we really put like a yellow tint on this thing makes a big difference here it even does overpower the blue we had before and you know you could really work with it and try to keep a blue glow on this side and a yellow glow up here but I think it looks just as good if it's all yellow so there zooming out a bit very realistic candle glow there. Now one thing that this candle's not doing that this one did is this one is shrinking and growing a lot. Now to get that effect there's a few different ways you can do it. The easiest way to do it is to go back into the emitter group and just animate the particle lifespan. So you can do this manually putting a keyframe here revealing it with U in the timeline and you could put in some manual keyframes 
Or you can just make two keyframes and then use the wiggle expression in After Effects. So if I wiggle this once per second with a magnitude of let's say 0.7 and apply, so you can see we get that sort of grow and shrink nature that candles and flames tend to have. And that's pretty much that. Now to make this work with music, that's another story. So we're going to use the same parameter. It's going to be the particle lifespan again. But we're going to use Beat Reactor to do that. So let me bring in that music I used, the Bach, Toka, and Fugue. If I reveal the waveform here, the part I used was about here. It's where the organ starts to build up really ominously. So let's just move that towards the start of our scene. And we're going to create a new solid for the beat reactor. I'm going to call it beat reactor, set this to some different color, get beat reactor in my effects here, apply it onto that solid, and it disappears. Perfect. So we're going to solo this track right now, select the audio file. And here's the wave graph of it. Now these bars represent different frequencies in the music. And you can adjust the resolution of these bars by going into Audio Spectrum Options. I'm going to set this frequency resolution to 128. And I'm going to turn the smoothness down to zero. That way I can practically see individual notes getting played in the frequency. And you can even adjust the display itself, like increasing the min and max, or increasing the percentage scale of each range. A lot of control here. So how do I know which part of the song I want to identify? Well, I'm just going to play it with the preview to RAM. Okay, I hope that wasn't too loud for you. Uh, but it was clear to me that this part came on with the keyboard that I want. So before that, there was nothing there. And yeah, like this spike right here. So that's the spike I want the candles to come on with. So I can isolate that with this sample corner right here. And what we're going to do now is open effects output A and make sure these values match the parameter we're going to use it for. So we're going to use it for the particle lifespan. Here the maximum value is 10, that's 10 seconds. So the beat reactor maximum should not be 100. I'm going to actually bring it way down to about 1 because uh, that way my particles won't be any longer than one second. I'm going to make sure I use the comp frames per second, and I'm going to change my interpolation of these keyframes to linear. Hit generate output A. It happens almost instantaneously. Hitting U reveals all the keyframes that we have just made. We can even see them as a graph here to know how the shape is actually going to look. Looks good. Okay, we don't need to see the beat reactor track anymore. We can hide that. We're going to expose the particle lifespan again. Alt click on the stopwatch, grab that pick whip there, and connect it to output value A. It'll overwrite the keyframes you had there before, and check it out. Now the candle starts at nothing, and as the music builds up, we get more of a flame with it. Now if you go through this and you think, oh hey, we don't see it as much as I hoped I would, you can still make changes. Of course, you can directly modify the expression, or you can just come back in here, make some change like maybe 1.5, delete all the keyframes, and then just create them again. And the connection will still be there in your expression, so very easy change to be done. All right, now let's say you want to change the overall height at its maximum point, but what are you going to do? You're, you don't want to generate all those keyframes now. So instead, just change the particle speed. Bringing that down to like 25, of course, would make it about half as tall. You don't see as much of a change because the particles are closer together, but you get the idea. Also, at this point, I want to point out, if you increase the speed random and the spread again, you get some cool looking fire effects with this. Um, so, of course, candles and flames are the same thing. So you can take this kind of effect in a lot of different ways, um, but I'm going to stop it with that. Now how do you make this part of your 3D scene? Well, that part is mostly AE workflow, but I'll show you how to do it quickly. Here's my footage. Again, this is not color corrected. So what you would do is just select your video, go to animation, and say track camera. 
Now again, this is a, a 2D source, and I did have a fixed angle of view. I could even specify the, the lens if I knew it. It actually was 35 millimeters. So it's already going through the process. It takes about a couple minutes, so I'll just skip ahead to when it's done. And it's done, and you can see all these different points, these track points. You can scrub through to make sure they keep on target, and they're good. So create camera, and now we have a 3D camera in our scene. So going back into the track here, let's rename it particle. We have a checkbox, use comp camera. And doing that, you might see the particles go away. Oh, there they are, and there they go. So we have to do a little bit of work here to make sure we can still see the particles in the 3D camera. A few things you definitely want to do here is turn off your 2D effects and go to global settings. Like I was saying earlier, far clip plan adjust, turn that really high, like 4,000 or something. That'll make sure that the particles don't get clipped when they're too far from the camera. Okay, now let's go back into the emitter setting and change the position of the particles so it fits in the eye socket. And unfortunately, because it's a 2D source, we can't just match the motion here. We're gonna have to eyeball it, so to speak. And I know from experience that this has to go about negative 5.4 or 0.3. You can see how much smaller my particles got when I did that. So I'm gonna go back into the particles group, increase their size, and now since they're so short, I'm also going to increase their speed, maybe to 80. There, now it looks more like a candle again. Okay, so let's reposition it so it fits in the eye socket, like so. Looks good. And check by scrubbing. If you see your particles drifting too much, that means they're too close to the camera, so push them back. If they're not moving enough to keep up with the footage, that means they're too far away. Uh, looks like I pretty much nailed it right there. Just have to fix the X and Y. And there, creepy eyeball. Now let's put those 2D effects back on here, see if they work. The vector blur is too strong now, so bring that way down to 10, looks good. Probably the glows will also be too strong, so bring the radius down on them. Looks better. And the second one, actually that's pretty good. Let's bring down the radius again too. Nice. Now, of course, this camera's moving, so let's add that motion blur now. Just going to use smooth fast and increase the shutter angle to 360. That should cover it. And now let's get two particles. Just duplicate that track and move the second one to the other eye socket. You might notice that they are exactly the same in terms of animation. So to give this second one some randomness, go back into the global settings and just change the random seed parameter and you're done. And if you liked what you saw here, please try your own, create your own freaky candle Bach nightmares. Anyway, you can find more tutorials at the website borisfx.com. Thank you for watching, and happy Halloween.